Hey YouTube, I wanted to make this video for you uh, if you've ever had any issues with your Lexus IS300 and your ignition uh, key cylinder and the assembly. Now, you know, I was in my car. Actually, the car started and um, I was heading to a gas station. And when I get to the gas station, I couldn't turn the car off. So, you know, I never realized what happened after starting the car that the shaft had broken. Um, learning this after, you know, pulling everything apart and seeing what the issue, issue was. So if you ever have an issue, not where it's stuck in ACC, between lock and ACC because that's what I hear is pretty common with Toyota, Lexus, uh, and their ignition cylinder. But my issue here was it wasn't stuck. It just wouldn't either start or turn off. You know, I pretty much have this free play. I don't know if you guys can notice, but it's completely free play here. So what I did was I found out how to take uh, apart the the key cylinder. Um, I already have everything apart. Hopefully, you guys will be able to uh, get that far without step by step instructions. Um, you know, this is for those who are pretty much a do it yourselfer and um, your hands on with this stuff. So I went to a junkyard. And uh, I got another one because he wouldn't sell me the shaft without buying the entire um, the entire assembly. This is the uh, the key assembly and whatnot. So after you take the lower panel off, and uh, you take the the housing uh, for the speedometer off, so that way you can get access to the cylinder uh, as of right now I actually do have my speedometer out the only reason why I took it out is because there were two bulbs behind it that blew out I figured I would go ahead and change it now so when you're trying to access the cylinder what you're gonna have to do as you can see the sensor ring is still on here this is what allows the chip in your key to access and send a signal to the computer and say okay well I'm here I'm ready to start so what you're going to do is remove the sensor ring so that way you can have access to just the cylinder the key cylinder here here's another thing you're not going to be able to remove the key cylinder if you don't have a key so make sure you have a key let me see, reach over here real quick. So the tools that I use to remove it as the cylinder is still inside and attached to the column is pretty much, you just need a, a flathead screw, uh, a Phillips screwdriver and a pick. Because what happens is you're going to have to reach over and push this button inside which would allow the key cylinder to be released and how you do that is you put it in ACC it has to be in ACC which allows the pin inside to drop otherwise you're not going to be able to do it you you can't do it in the on position it won't move and you can't do it in a lock position it won't move the only way this thing is coming out is when it's in ACC so you get a pin in there you push it down and you're able to pull it out it might be a little bit tough but I'll get it out here so it's coming out you just gotta wiggle it out there yeah this has been in there for a while but it's coming out this is the first time I'm actually pulling this one out so there you go it came out so this is what the key cylinder looks like if you ever have lost your key and um, you don't have any spare keys, 
this is pretty much what they're going to replace so that way you can get access to starting your vehicle uh, with the key they're gonna have to reprogram it it's already cut but they're more than likely gonna have to try to reprogram it um, if you have it have that issue I wish you luck with that because that's pretty difficult to do uh, so my issue lies here inside the cylinder is a shaft so what happens is you have the key cylinder a shaft in between that connects to your ignition switch which you can see down here on mine is hanging out the back because that's the only way that I was able to get my car started just by entering the key into ignition and coming down here I'm, I'm just gonna use this key for example because it's what fits into the slot and I was able to start my car this way I don't know if I can sh if you guys can see but that's what I'm gonna try to do so I was able to start my car through my ignition switch because that's all it is when you have the assembly you have the where did it go you have the key cylinder there's a shaft in between that I'm going to take out because that's the issue here of mine. The shaft broke and I'm going to show you when I get it out. Uh, actually, I didn't take the process of doing that in there now, but I I'll show you there as well. I uh, just figured since I have this out, I'll be able to show you. So that's the only way I was able to still use my car. I didn't really go anywhere, but... um. That's how I got my car started for the time being, and um, I was happy that I was able to do that just fine. So, I'm going to use a needle nose plier because inside there's um, the shaft where you have you're going to grab and you're going to uh, try to unlock it. I think in this case I am going to have to take off the switch back here so that way I can pull out the whole uh, the whole unit it wasn't an issue when I did it on my car because it was broken but this one I'm going to have to go ahead and remove the ignition switch so that way I can remove out the shaft. Uh, I'm trying to move as fast as I can here for you guys. Let's see, is this going to go down or up? Let me use this to free it. I think it's going to go up. Or down. Let's see which side is it on. It goes down. All right. So move that out the way. So this is your ignition switch that's behind your assembly. This shaft that's inside is what connects to the inner part of the switch here it goes right in here this shaft fits into the ignition switch and allows the transition of the key to turn the switch so that's 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 my issue here that the shaft which I now am going to have complete access to and it's coming out um, is what broke on me so that's that that's the issue this end of the shaft was not able to turn my ignition switch this whole portion here broke off the entire portion 
right on the end of the tip here. So that's, you know, where I had, where you get all of this free access from, where it's not even making contact to ignition switch. So that's what, you know, if you have that issue, you're able to do without buying this whole thing. Unfortunately, I did have to buy this whole thing just to get this part. Um, it's not sold separately at the dealership. You're not going to find a part number for this, uh, for this piece. Um, I found, you know, many websites in other countries online that would actually sell this, but... I haven't found it for a Lexus IS 300. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna put this down. I'm going to gain access. Take the key out. Unscrew the sensor. All right. Let me put that up there remove the sensor like I said again you're going to have to get a pick and um, insert the key back in here so that way it's an ACC position all right use your pick to push down on a button while it's in ACC and you're able to pull it straight out um, at this point you can pretty much take the key out um, and do whatever so that's that's the issue here um, or that's how you do that portion now I'm going to use my needle nose plier so that way I can get access to the shaft and pull it out all right so that's this is where if I can get this old piece that I have here where I can actually show you the difference this is supposed to be attached here which fits into the ignition switch so this piece that broke off prevented me from starting the car if you can see the difference so you it, it makes a huge difference that that little this little piece this tiny tiny piece here broke off and prevented me from starting the vehicle well actually it prevented me from turning it off um, at the same same time it prevents you from using the ignition switch so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in here um, when I pulled it out, this piece was on the bottom, and um, if you can see, um, basically, as I was removing it, it had I used a needle nose plier to latch onto it and push it in. Now, in that same motion, this piece goes up. Um, you're not going to be able to remove it without pushing it in. You push it in and you turn it inside uh, you're pretty much going to turn it left to remove it and you're going to have to turn it right to install it so you can pretty much just go ahead um, I think I should put my switch actually back in um, now but I think actually I'll be okay I'm gonna put this in I'm gonna put this back in first I'm pretty sure that I once I get this lined up with the key inside that I'll be able to with my original cylinder and that's another way let me just show you real quick how that works that this fits into here this shaft is what allows access to turn to unlock the steering wheel as well as well so these notches it's what allows the steering wheel to uh, to lock and unlock based on its position um, so that's the story behind that this shaft and how it, how the whole thing works it fits into the cylinder and allows you to turn the shaft which then in turns the ignition switch 
So like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and put this inside and install it because I feel like I'm just running, going on and on. Pretty much hopefully you guys get the gist of it. Those who, you know, really know what they're doing. If you don't, hopefully I, I was detailed enough. So you're going to have to push it in. Once you get it pushed in a line, like I said, you're going to have to turn it right. So that way you can get it back into the, into the lock position. The state of lock position as if the key cylinder was inside and it's in the lock position. This is the lock position. So that, so that's pretty much the angle of that shaft that you're trying to put back in there after you push it in and turn it right to install it back inside. Um, again, you're still gonna need to have the key into the ACC position which allows this button to go to move. Without it being in the ACC, this button will not, will not move. It's in lock position now, it won't move, okay? I can, you, you're not gonna get that in there. I know I kinda made my point a while ago with that, but so that way you guys really understand what's going on. Like again, put it in the ACC position and then you're able to install it back in here. Just remember that you also, more than likely you're gonna have to line up the the shaft back here so that way the slot behind the key cylinder will fit into there so you that's another thing there you're gonna have to play around with it to get it in there it's not gonna go in easy on the first go as this thing already moves around inside on this on this little Mary own. All right, so I got it in there on the second go. I put it in the lock position. Again, it's going to free play and move until you put the ignition switch back on it, behind it, and install it. And then um, I'll be able to turn it on using the key going to get up under here see if I can do that now kind of didn't want to uh, leave it on the, re the recorder but I'll, I'll do it because I'm not really into uh, editing videos and whatnot turning it off and editing So make sure I got that in there. Ah, pretty much forgot about this guy. This guy gotta be on here for it to start. So now I'm able to actually get it started because the shaft now fits into the ignition switch. I'm gonna turn that off. So that way I can actually get the screws in here. It's not that easy uh, back here, but I got access to it. I'm gonna get access to it and get these screws back in here. All right, I got one in there. Let's see if I can get the other one in there. I got a magnetic. Uh, it seems like it kind of demagnetized. Let's see if I can actually get it in here by hand. Hopefully it'll stay on like the first one did. 
All right, awesome. Got that screwed in there. Just want to make sure that's pretty tight so that with this no play. So that's tight back there so that's going to solve the issue with that sh with the shaft being broken here now I have complete contact between the key cylinder which then again fits into the shaft and allows the shaft to turn the switch oh sorry guys uh, allows the shaft to turn the switch behind it all right so now I don't have the issue of that free play anymore um, it goes to the ACC it goes straight to the on position and I'm now actually able to start the car uh, without reaching down there and turning the switch in itself um, you know it's really simple um, pretty much if you do lose, lose your key um, and you don't have a, a chip in your key you're actually able to still start your car all right it's you know you don't have to break wires um, I'm not trying to teach you guys how to how to steal a car but um, if you still want to start your car a lot of mechanics they know these things you work on cars technicians work on cars you know pretty much once you gain access to the switch you just get right behind there and then just turn this position to turn this thing into the, the start and on position and it'll turn right over all right guys I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together um, after uh, this weird experience of of that shaft breaking um, which is not the common part of the of the cylinder uh, it's just where it gets stuck in between the uh, lock and ACC position I don't know if it's the same exact issue with the shaft or not uh, but I know a lot of people they just change out the cylinder not the uh, the shaft all right guys I, I appreciate the time um, hopefully you guys can make something of this video and um, if there's anything else I come across I'll be happy to post it up for you guys thanks